a large number of people believe that there is a certain reason for the new Tesla Model 3 getting better efficiency, in fact, the world's best efficiency for an electric car, and better range as a result. They think that the change was the aerodynamic shape of the car, but actually, it wasn't. There is a change that Tesla made that makes a huge difference. In fact, makes almost all of the difference to the improvements in the Model 3. But it's not what people are saying. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Great to have you. The Hyundai Ioniq 6. Why do I bring up the Ioniq 6? Well, Hyundai planned on implementing some new technology in their new EVs. They haven't actually implemented it yet. They had planned on putting it in the Ioniq 6, but it didn't go into that car yet, but it will in the future. The new technology is this, air suspension that automatically raises or lowers the car depending on the terrain you're driving on or what your goals are. Now, if your goal is to get over your driveway's lip without scratching the front of your car, well, the idea is that the car would heighten the suspension. But if your goal is to simply get the best efficiency and range on the freeway or in general driving, assuming you're driving on nice smooth roads, then you want the car to be as low as possible. Therefore, the air suspension automatically lowers the car to make it more efficient. Hyundai created a patent for that. I don't know how you can create a patent for that. They created a patent for that some time ago. I think it's about 12 months and talked about how this was a huge difference maker. And I, I agree. Hyundai is onto the right thing here. I think pretty much all electric cars within the next few years should have this feature, the ability to raise or lower the car. Now, assuming you have air suspension, you might as well include this feature. Now, of course, it, it requires some calibration. It requires cameras that can see the road, etc., etc. And this leads me to the point here. Analysts and journalists and everyone else is saying, the reason the new Tesla Model 3 has an incredible efficiency of 12 kilowatt hours of energy per 100 kilometers driven, which is obviously class leading worldwide, is because it's shaped differently. It's now the most aerodynamic, or not the most, but it's the most aerodynamic Tesla you can currently buy. It has an CD of 0.21 versus 0.23 for the previous Tesla Model 3. Therefore, it's much more efficient and now the range has improved by around 5% or around 20, about 21 kilometers, about 15 miles for the standard range Model 3. And of course, a little bit more than that for the long range version, giving them some incredible efficiency. In fact, the best efficiency that we know of, of any electric car you can buy today. So what's the difference here? Is it true that the Model 3 is getting this incredible class leading, world leading, to be honest, efficiency as a result of the changes of the front bonnet and changes to the aerodynamic shape of the car. Well, not really, no. Now here's the technical information. The Model 3 is the most aerodynamic Tesla ever with a drag coefficient of 0.219. However, the Model S has a drag coefficient of 0.208. So what does Tesla mean by this vehicle having the best drag coefficient. Well, Tesla says that the Model 3 has the lowest absolute drag of any Tesla with 0.219. And that's since been confirmed that in fact, actually, the Model 3 has a 5% improvement on the outgoing model's CD of 0.23. And therefore, say journalists, the Aerodynamic performance is the single most important factor that contributes to the new Tesla Model 3's efficiency increase of 8%. However, the reason for this increased efficiency is not simply by changing the shape of the car. That helps a tiny bit. It's simply by lowering the car. When I first saw the statistics for the car, the height of the car, I wondered what was going on. Why was the new Tesla Model 3, why was the roof height lower than the previous roof? When clearly you can see Tesla is using exactly the same door panels and exactly the same roof as the previous model. Well, the reality is Tesla has simply lowered the Model 3. It's now lower than what it was before. In fact, there is a YouTube video done by a Norwegian guy um, a couple of years ago, and he tested the Tesla Model 3. He found that lowering his Tesla Model 3 actually improved the efficiency by 7%. 
Tesla has actually lowered the Model 3 a similar amount to what he lowered his Model 3. So from what I can tell, there's probably an approximately 1% improvement in efficiency from the changes to the shape of the Model 3, maybe some minor motor adjustments and changes. But around 7% or at least 5% of the improvement is thanks to the lowering of the car. The new suspension setup in the Tesla Model 3, um, it's been basically used to lower the vehicle and improve the suspension feel at the same time. Now, of course, if you've got a low driveway, that's going to be problematic for you because it doesn't have air suspension. So you won't be able to raise the car to get over air suspension. But of course, most people, this won't affect. And the truth is the Model 3 is not very low. It's just lower than the previous model. Lower enough to improve the range by around 8%. So as you can see, lowering your car is extremely important. And what does this mean if you put bigger wheels on your car? Will your car therefore be higher? Yes, it will. In fact, if you increase the sidewall in your tires, it will also increase the height of your car. Both of those things will lower your efficiency, lower the range you're gonna get from your electric car. So I don't think journalists, most of them quite understand the concepts here behind the improving the efficiency of a car. More than anything else, more than anything you can do, lowering your car and possibly putting smaller wheels and tires on it will significantly improve your range far more than anything else you can do. Are there other things you can do to improve your efficiency? Actually, there are. One of the things Tesla did was they used some new tires. I think the new tires probably improved the efficiency by about 1% possibly, which the reason being they have less rolling resistance. But I think more than that, the new tires were more about the soft sidewall. Softer tires mean a more comfortable ride. And the biggest criticism of the Model 3 was not its range, but its suspension quality. It was too hard. People complained about it being too hard. They felt like that wasn't a luxurious experience. Tesla, of course, was more focused on sporty performance. And yes, it definitely did that, but people wanted something softer. So the new tires are softer, and that is one of the big improvements that the Model 3 has, the journalists have pointed out. So what else can you do? Well, you can remove your mirrors. Removing your side mirrors can improve your efficiency by around 5%. I'm not saying you should do that, but I do know a lot of people that will actually fold their mirrors in when they're driving on the freeway because it improves their car's efficiency. This is probably the sort of thing you maybe most people would only do if they had to. For example, if you realize that actually getting to your next supercharger location on a long drive was gonna be a stretch, thinking I might not make it, well, you can fold in your mirrors. Now, obviously reducing your speed will help using regen braking on full and not using normal braking at all. There's various factors like that can also improve your range. However, there are also kits that you can buy online which will slightly improve your range. They kind of put added plastic pieces and molds on your car in areas where the aerodynamics can be slightly improved. Personally, I wouldn't actually worry too much about most of that. I'd focus on having those smaller tires, making sure I didn't have tires that were like all wheel drive tires, or you know, you've seen a lot of tires that have got big knobs on them, having something smoother, also having a narrower tire that will also improve your efficiency. And that's something you can pretty easily do. Now, if you live in an area where you need all wheel drive traction, or you need to focus on traction on wet, icy roads, then that's not gonna be a good choice for you. But most people don't. In fact, 90% of the world's population lives on what we call the Sun Belt. So let me know your thoughts on this in the comments, and thank you for watching.